Many of today's high-speed serial designs are closed eye, meaning that the eye at the input of the receiver is closed. In order to open the eye, equalization must be done at the receiver. The methodology used for equalization is silicon dependent, but many specifications, including SuperSpeed USB and PCI Express Gen 3, describe a reference equalizer. This equalizer is used for compliance testing. It is not meant to describe requirements for silicon as it is assumed that silicon equalization is equal or better than the reference equalizer. While reference equalizers are sufficient for compliance testing, they fall short when the need to model actual silicon is required. Using silicon specified models allows better comparison to simulations and insight while troubleshooting. Closed eye specifications require that oscilloscopes have built in equalization. While CTLE, DFE, and FFE models have been available for years and scope only announce the software, the ability to model specific silicon is a shortcoming of many solutions. To solve this problem, Textronics now provides the ability to use ABIS AMI models in our serial data link analysis visualizer software. ABIS AMI is a specification which allows the equalization model to be described in a black box which does not expose IP. The purpose of this demo is to show how an IBIS AMI model can be used to open a closed eye on a 6 gigabit per second SAS signal. We are capturing a 6 gigabit per second signal directly from the transmitter. Note that the signal on the oscilloscope is clean. In this example, we are going to simulate embedding a back plane and thus rendering the eye closed. We will then use an IBIS AMI model to open the eye. The first step is to open SDLA Visualizer and select our input source. In this case, our differential signal is loaded into our Math1 function. We will choose Math1 as our input. We now want to simulate a 40 inch ISI trace, which will have the effect of closing the eye. SDLA Visualizer has two main circuits, the measurement and the simulated circuit. The TX and the D embedded blocks are in the measurement circuit, and then TX embed and D-embed blocks are in the simulation circuit. The measurement circuit is used to describe the physical test setup and includes items such as probes, fixtures, and cables, which need to be removed or de-embedded from the acquired signal. The simulation circuit compromises of the TX embed and RX blocks and is used to simulate a signal through a channel, cable, or connectors, for example. The first step is to load the 40-inch trace into the embed block. We can simply do this by selecting the embed block and picking the first block, B1. The 40-inch trace is represented as a four-port single-ended S-parameter model. In SDLA, we select the File tab and then under Model, pick four-port single-ended. The S-parameter model can now be loaded by selecting the Browse button. After selecting the S-parameter model, we can verify its contents by selecting the Plot button. Based on the plot, we can see the loss at 3 GHz will be minus 10 dB. Once the S parameter has been loaded, our next step is to specify the RX input impedance. For this example, we will assume a nominal value of 50 ohms. We have also assumed a 50 ohm transmitter output impedance. Finally, we can specify the equalization model as we expect the channel effects to completely close the eye. In this case, we are using an IBIS AMI model to model the receiver equalization. When I click on the RX block, I can see that there are three choices, through, AMI, and user. User mode allows me to specify CTLE, FFE, and or DFE equalization. This mode uses Tektronics algorithms for the equalizer. In AMI mode, I am allowed to select the AMI and DLL file that describes the IBIS AMI model. The AMI file describes the input parameters of the model and the DLL encapsulates the algorithmic details of the model. IBIS AMI model supports either an impulse response or a waveform as input. In the case of SDLA, We'll use the scope waveform and the get waveform function of the IBIS AMI model. Since many IBIS AMI models have the requirement that the waveform must have an integer number of samples per bit, SDLA provides the flexibility to 
to specify the number of bits per sample. Based on this, resampling of the waveform is done to guarantee the correct number of bits per sample for the model. By selecting the AMI file, I'm able to load the model AMI file. Likewise, by selecting the DLL file, I'm able to load the corresponding DLL file for the AMI model. I'm also able to view the input file parameters by selecting the edit button next to the AMI button. I am now ready to process the model. I want to observe the effects of the channel and the effect of the equalizer. So I press TP3 on the main screen so I can observe the signal after the channel. I can now select TP3 and assign it to Math2. I also select TP4. I have configured SDLA to automatically to run DPOJet after the model has been applied. I have done this by selecting the first checkbox in the configure selection under the apply button configuration. I have the option to automatically configure DPOJet. This is the best option to use if a setup has not already been configured. If a setup has already been configured and I want to use that setup with SDLA, the clear and recalc is the best option. I can now press the apply button to process the model. First, SDLA will compute the transfer function at TP3, which includes the effects of the 40 inch trace. Next, SDLA will process the EMI model and then will automatically configure DPO jet. Based on the results, you can see the effects of the simulated channel and the effects after apply the IBIS AMI equalization model. I can do further analysis by customizing my measurement selection. For example, I can run a SAS compliance test to ensure that my signal is within the specification limits. This video has shown how to use SDLA Visualizer to apply a silicon specific equalization model to a SAS 6 gig signal and how to use DPOJet to measure the jitter and 